Hey guys, welcome back. Ash Kendra here, Tigers Media. Today we're doing a bit of a six year review on my 2014 MacBook Pro 13 inch Retina. We're going to put it up against that brand new 16 inch 2019 Monster laptop that Apple's just released. Uh, it on paper looks like it would smash this thing out of the ballpark, but I don't think that's all the case. Let's go check it out right now. And if you enjoy the video, why don't you smash that subscribe, hit the bell, and every every day I'll bring out news and videos and tech for you so you can catch up on all the latest. Thanks for stopping by, and let's go with that intro. Radio. Let's get into this. Um, I thought I would go put this beautiful machine of mine, the 2014 mid-year uh, 13 inch MacBook Pro Retina up against this new 2016, uh, 2019 16 inch MacBook Pro. Now I don't have one of those. I'd, I'm looking to try and save up and get one. Uh, I need $5,100. I don't have that, but what I have is a laptop that has done me so good for the last six years. I really don't know if I should be complaining. Going to look at uh, the history of 2014. What was big in tech this over this year? We'll go check that out now. And we'll just have a quick glimpse at what was happening in 2014. Let's go check it out. Now you've got the LG 55-inch OLED come out, three and a half, three grand, I think it was. I actually have this one, it's the curved screen, and I love this telly. It's amazing, uh, an absolutely gorgeous telly. Definitely recommend it if you can get one second hand, and you can get them on Grays Online, I know in Australia, second hand, they're pretty awesome. The Bose Soundlink Bluetooth, I remember this coming out, it was a big deal, quality of sound, portable. Uh, there were none of those. Uh, UEs and all the portable things out there. None of that was happening. This was like the big news. This is the best and greatest of sounds. So like a lot's changed in six years. Beat Studio Wireless. That's the next one. <laughs> six years since they've come out. Can you believe how quickly time's gone? Uh, like they're just an average speaker now. And pff, really, it's uh, pretty wild. Apple iPhone 6. A fantastic phone. I had the plus version of this. This was the duck's guts of phones. Uh, it won awards. It was seen, uh, CNET's phone of the year. It was a fantastic phone. It just blew everything out of the water. It's been a long time since Apple's done that. So it was a huge deal for them to get that with the iPhone 6. It's competition. This next one, the Samsung S5. Look where we are now, where they've come in six years. Samsung has blown it up. We've got folding phones, horizontal, vertical, all sorts happening with Samsung. They've just gone berserk since this phone, uh, since copper hiding off the iPhone 6 then. The next one up, Nikon D750. Wow, what a camera. Still to this day, one of the best DSLRs you can buy. Uh, it is a bit of a dying breed. We're all going mirrorless. Uh, it's all uh, YouTubers and 4K video and 6K and 8K now. Uh, the DSLRs are still there for the professional photographers and I understand why. Uh, the Lumix, the next one up here, the DMX LX100, <clears throat> one of their first micro four thirds cameras. Look where Lumix is now, six years later. They got the SH1, the G9, they have some serious, serious firepower in the ca in the camera world. They went mirrorless early, um, and they adapted, and they did a heck of a job, and they are as stronger than ever. With and now what they've got now is just mind blowing, an amazing job for them. GoPro, <laughs> the GoPro Four Silver. I've got the black that I still use as a second camera, so I've got my. GoPro 7 that I use for the main thing when I'm fishing and I use the GoPro 4 on the console to get the anything else that I miss. 
a fantastic little unit, an amazing bit of kit. When it came out, it was amazing. 1080p, YouTube, most of the stuff on YouTube is still 1080p. Six years ago, just mind-blowing. Apple iMac 5K. I remember this coming out. This was like, holy crap, you have to be a millionaire to own this. Exactly like the new iMac Pro is, you have to be a millionaire to own it. And this new Mac Pro that's coming out, you have to be a, a film studio to own. When this then this come out, I think it was like five thousand bucks or something ridiculous. It was like, wow, who's going to buy that? You don't need it. No one's got five K anyway. Blah blah. It was all if you had a four K TV, you were like a king, and it was costing you seven eight grand. So for a five K computer screen, it was just knock your socks off. Pebble. Pebble steel watches, they were huge. Uh, E-ink displays, they were going to be the big thing. Uh, they started off the wearables market. Look where Apple is now. They're up to Series 5, full on displays, heart rate monitors, emergency services, automatic calling if you fall over and you're going to have a, and if you have a heart attack, they'll call the doc, the uh, ambulance for you. All started with Pebble. Uh, Pebble is bankrupt no more. They're gone, done and dusted. They died off. 2014 was a huge year for tech. As you can see from just a sample of those uh, bits and pieces on there, uh, just amazing where we've come in six years. So this laptop is that year. It has not missed a beat for me in six years. I, I've used it. I've traveled all across Australia, the world with it. Um, yeah, I really don't know what to say. I travel to and from mine sites, back and forth, dusty, dirty, crappy plains, wet weather, humid, muggy, all sorts. Uh, it's done everything for me. Emails, spreadsheets, videos, pictures, all that. In the last two years, it's built my YouTube channel. All on this thing. This has got the 2014, this is a 500 gig SSD, the first year of the SSDs. Mind-blowing what that did for me. To turn a computer on, used to be like a minute and a half, go get a drink of water and come back. Turn this thing on, 10 seconds later, you get typing your password to get in. Oh, wow. That was just like mind-blown. What a computer. Retina display. The images on it are still today. They're like the crystal, man. It's like an amazing screen. And it's, the screen still spot the dog. Never misses a beat. I'm going to go through the positives of this machine because I think it's amazing. It's got a HDMI slot so I can connect directly to whatever I need to to send a message. I've never had to need it, but it's there. I've got two Thunderbolt 2s. I've got two USBs. Guess what? I think this is the last year SD card slot, full size. Never misses a beat. Card in, card out. Bang, 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 bang. Awesome. It's got all the peripheral ports we need. It's got headphone jack. It's got the mag mag charger that you just bump and the lead just pops straight off. Fantastic. Brilliant design. Keyboards, never missed a beat. Perfect. I've had a little rubber sleeve over it. Kept it in a million immaculate condition. Always clean it. I've got, as you can see, I've got the cover. And guess this, look at this. 2014, the Apple logo lit up. Now, they were talking about that last year it, to come out with the 16 as a new thing. Negative side. Unfortunately, in 2019, we've got 4K, we've got 1080p, this beautiful Canon M50, does an amazing job, and I, I can really, I'd love to do everything in 4K. She struggles with the renders. <laughs> If I even just do a normal render, so you add some photos into a timeline on Premiere Pro, it can take 30 minutes for 10 photos, 10 high-res photos, JPEGs, just to get rendered in. Uh, if I've had videos where I've done an hour, some of my fishing videos and other vid big videos like the iCast reviews and stuff from the shows, they're like 45 minutes an hour. That took 18 hours. 18 hours to render out from Premiere Pro. This poor little girl was thermal throttling for pumping continuously 
in my room. Lucky I keep my room aircon on at uh, 16 degrees for 18 hours straight just to get that thing rendered into an MP4 so I could put it on YouTube. Then I'm going to upload that. That can then take another five to six hours to upload a, a movie that long. So I've got to, all it basically means is I've got to plan ahead. It never misses a beat. I can I can still do 4K video on Premiere Pro. It stutters and starts, but I can get it done. I've just got to plan ahead on how I do it. So if I want to get it out on a Friday, I'd need to start rendering Thursday, Wednesday night. It'll go all the way to Thursday, then Thursday to upload it, and it'll be ready for Friday. It's a two-day program. Now, I run her on the cine bench. Oh, yeah, I had to give that a crack. Scores were 704 points. Not bad. Six years old, 704. It's got a i5 4308U CPU, two cores, four threads, 2.8 gigahertz. Uh, it's got the Intel Iris Open GL engine, so it's got the internal uh, GPU, so no external cards. So, it's like, from that, you'd think it's going to be crap. But all this I've done with this machine, 2500 bucks. So over six years, that's a $416 outlay per year. 5100 to get the 16-inch I want, that's 850 bucks over six years, if it lasts six years. I'm going to need to take it to six years to get it. So that's double what I'm paying to run this. And this thing still works. So if you just need a basic good laptop, go ahead and get one of these. I'll chuck a link below for them because you're crazy. Why not? If you just need a laptop to travel, you want to chuck photos and stuff on, you don't do video editing like I do or you're not a creator and doing heaps of video. If you're doing Lightroom, even Lightroom, you no dramas. Lightroom, this thing smashes out Lightroom. No dramas. Takes a couple of minutes to up uh, share the photos over. That's not much to ask. I'm not in that much of a super rush. I'm not a high-level photographer trying to pump out the work and get all that stuff done. So, I mean, you, it's just a little bit of time you give up for what you get, and it's a big saving. Now, the Cinebench for the 2019 16-inch is... Now, this is only the 6-core. I'll give you This is not the 8-core the top range, and the 5100 was an A-core. So that's, I will say that to you. That's the one I will look want to, do want to buy. So this is the i7 8750 CPU. That's a 1270 score on Cinebench. In six years, it's less than doubled. So I'll, I'll chuck up the two Cinebench scores now on the screen. Pow. There you go. You can see... Uh, 704, that's my 2014. And the 12, where the arrow's going, the 1270, that's the new i7 version of the 16-inch. So comparably speaking, and that i7 will be, would be cheaper than the 5100. I will give, give you that. And the only other negative, sorry, I will say before that, negative is just the size. The timelines for doing Premiere Pro, to have that 15 or 16 inch screen, which is only 0.6 of an inch bigger, so it's not really a much bigger, but it's a 16 inch over the 13, so that's three inches bigger, an inch and, inch and a half on each corner, that's, that's a massive bit of space. Um, to get be able to get that timeline a bit longer, I think would be a huge, huge difference for me when I'm doing my editing, it makes it big. So having the bigger laptop would be good. Weight-wise, I don't care. So anyway, my conclusion is, I think I wait. I'm going to... I hate to say it out loud because I don't want her to hear. I'm going to drive her to the ground. Realistically, six years, this thing is still a fantastic unit. 2014 MacBook Pro 13-inch Retina. So let's let's talk about the good and the bad for the 16 inch. It's got the i9 chip. It's got grunt just pouring out of it. It's an amazing machine. The good things, I'm going to talk about the good new things, not the good repaired things. Okay, so the screen's a little bit bigger, 0.6 of an inch to the old 15.4. It makes it an even number 
we know Apple. Apple's going to have to be really stupid if they don't make the 13-inch or 14-inch next year. The speakers, fantastic. All reviewers have said the speakers are amazing. So that's awesome. That's very cool. That's what we want, stuff like that. The new microphone, fantastic, awesome. That's what we want. The negatives. The webcam, still crap. 720p, in like, are you kidding? I think that's what I'm running here on my 2014. Six years old and it's got the same webcam. That's crap. The keyboard. That's not a new feature. That's not Apple listening. That's Apple's re- reacting to losing millions of dollars in warranty programs because it's a crap item. They had to fix it. USB-C. They haven't fixed that. Dongle gate. Only the other day they... Re- just ripped all their reviews off their thing after the F-Stop has smashed them for having one-star reviews for every dongle where they sell at high prices, high prices, low prices. They all had crap reviews because none of them work. The dongle situation is ridiculous for USB-C. Something needs to be done there. They need to fix that problem. There's no SD card slot. There's no HDMI slot. Most of the reviews are that they couldn't get anything to work with a TV. These guys are going on and doing conferences and they can't get their stuff on the screen because there's no dedicated HDMI. They put the escape key back. The touch bar does really nothing. If it had been like those new laptops with the big touch bar so you could use for timelines and made it actually like a couple inches thick, they've got the world's biggest mouse pad. you got to move your whole hand over it. I can use my mouse pad on this and go across the whole screen and only move one or two inches. It's perfect. I don't need it. 10 inch by 10 inch mouse pad so they could have shrunk that the size of the the bottom deck way down put another like two or three inch screen there and put a timeline in there so you could work with your timeline or see it and split up your premiere pro that'd be awesome that's that would be something new so the touch bar just put an escape key in a fingerprint hello facetime all the phones are facetime Headphone port, they've got that, so that's good. But all in all, it's a great computer. All the reviews are fantastic on it. It was a great, great bit of kit. It's got all the good gear in it. <coughs> it comes with the R9 version, the top of the line version, or that base one, the one I want to get. It comes with one terabyte SSD, so that's fine. So it's double the size. I need that. Um, it comes with 16 RAM. That's fantastic. Mine's like four. So that's amazing. So that'll be really good for it. Um, it. It does have a lot of positives. I'm not going to say it's bad, but it's nothing fantastically new. They could have done a lot more new stuff. It's a basically a repair job, temp repair job, I believe. And then next year we'll get a whole new fleet of them. They'll bring in a whole range of everything and with something hopefully new in there, some new features that we've talked about. Anyway, that's it. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. A little bit of a run through on the review on the MacBook Pro. 13 inch Pro Retina 2014 versus the new 16 inch 2019 MacBook Pro. Thanks for stopping by. Please consider hitting the subscribe and the bell button. It'll help me out a heap. Uh, Really appreciate your support. Hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. Hope this has been entertaining and a little bit of an eye-opener of where we've come from six years ago and where we are now. And I think I'm, I'm hoping, if you think like me, that you might think the same, that we really haven't progressed too far on the Apple side. There could be, there's still room for a lot of improvement. Anyway, have a fantastic day, and I'll see you next time. Ciao. You're still here? Oh. Watch out for my cactus. Ah. <laughs> see you next time.